I'm a data engineer who uses Python in my work every day. In this video, I will share some of the tips and the best practices that I've learned along the way and how I use Python as a data engineer. One of the main tasks I do with the Python is data extraction and manipulation. I can just write few lines of code to extract data from different APIs or data set then start manipulating that data, drop some columns and apply some business logic on top of it. Python comes under the top five skills you need to know as a data engineer. Python has very simple syntax so even if you have never coded in your life, you can write Python code within few weeks. It also has huge ecosystem frameworks and libraries that you can use to perform data engineering work such as Pandas, NumPy, Airflow. Now let's understand the entire process by building a small project. In this demo, I'm going to show you how I would extract data from API, write some basic transformation job, deploy the data pipeline and load data data into target location. Our first task is to extract data from the different sources. Now in the real world, you might have data coming from the multiple sources such as web application or mobile application, some APIs, RDBMS or many more. But to build our own project, we have few options available. One is using static data sets so we can go to the website like kegel.com, google data search or amazon open data and similar website you can go here pick any data set you like and start working on it. But we want something real time a data that keeps changing so we get new data every hour every minute and for that we will be using APIs application programming interface. You can use basic code to connect to this API and start extracting data. There are many different APIs available in the market such as Spotify API, Twitter API, Stock Market API or you can just go to the different website and you will find bunch of different APIs that you can connect to and start extracting data. Once you find the APIs that we want to work on then we can go to this website and request for the API keys. After we have the access to the API then we can start writing the code to extract data from those APIs. Let's say in this case we decided to go with the Twitter API and we want to extract data from the Twitter. For the time being, we want to track what Elon Musk is tweeting each and every day and we want to build our final data set so that we can analyze that in future. We can start writing the code to extract data from the Elon Musk timeline. All of this data comes in JSON format, JavaScript object notation that looks like this. It has some keys and values. So if you want to access some values, you can just use the key name and access it. When we extract the data from the Twitter, it returns the output in the form of JSON data. This data is completely in the raw format and we want to transform this data into more readable form and more understandable form. And for that, we will write the basic transformation job. This includes reading the raw JSON data and then converting it into more readable format that is row and column format. For this, we have a package available inside Python that is called as Panda. So we can convert our entire raw data into data frame. A data frame is a data structure that organizes data into two dimensional table of rows and column. It is same as the excel sheet or any relational table you might know. Once we have our transformation job written then we can spend some time analyzing this data and think about how to load this data onto target location. So everything we are doing is called as ETL extract transform load so we can extract data from the multiple sources in this case we are extracting data from the twitter api then we can write some transformation job so we converted our raw data into more readable format that is basically applying some transformation and then we can load our data onto some target location that can be a data warehouse or any object storage location so you can store your data into multiple places one is object storage so you can store your data onto amazon s3 google cloud storage or azure data blob or we can use data warehouse so we basically have two types of system one is oltp online transactional processing and one is OLAP online analytical processing. OLTP systems are mainly designed for CRUD operation create, read, update, delete. So when you order something from the Amazon or when you purchase something or make payment online, all of these things should happen in real time and a record of your transaction should be created. OLTP systems are designed for this type of work, faster read, write and updates. OLTP systems are mainly MySQL, PostgreSQL, etc. But on the other case, we have OLAP, online analytical processing. So if you want to answer some of the questions such as, what was the last five years of revenue? How many products did we sell this year compared to last year's? All of these questions can be easily answered using OLAP system or data warehouses. Some of the example of data warehouses such as Snowflake, Google BigQuery, Amazon Redshift and many more. So in this case, we will keep it simple and we will store our data onto object storage that is Amazon S3 simple storage service. Amazon S3 is an object storage where we can store different type of files such as audio, video, text file or any type of file that you want to store. So we can store our transform data onto S3 and then in future if we want to do any analysis work then we can use that data 
to load it onto data warehouse or we can directly start analyzing data and build dashboards out of it but our work does not end here what we just did we just created a simple data file plan where we extracted the data we transformed that data and we loaded that data onto some target location in this case amazon s3 but we want to automate this entire process and our code should run every day at particular time interval that we set now to automate this entire thing we have multiple options available one option is we can just write the simple python script and deploy it on some virtual machine and set up the cron job a cron job is a linux command that is used for scheduling tasks to be executed at some time in the future but as we go forward in the future we might have more data sources coming and we might have to write multiple scripts and that becomes very difficult to manage with the cron job that is the reason we will be using a workflow orchestration tool we have many different tools available in the market such as airflow mage prefect and many more in this case we will go with the apache airflow so let me give you the basics of airflow in airflow we have something called as DAC directed acyclic graph it is basically a sequence of different tasks we can have multiple tasks one task for extracting data one for transformation one for loading some data onto target location this entire thing is called as stack and to create all of these different tasks we have something called as operators so there are many different operators available if you want to run the bash command if you want to execute python script and many more so in this case we want to run the python code so we will go with the python operator so once we have our DAG ready we can just copy our code and deploy it onto airflow you can install airflow in your local machine you can use managed services or you can install it on any virtual machine we will install our airflow onto ec2 machine and then copy our code there are multiple color coding available on airflow that shows different status of our job when it is green that means our code ran successfully and we can see our final output on s3 bucket once we have our transform data onto storage location then we can have even more transformation job we can load our data onto data warehouse then a data scientist or machine learning engineer can come build a machine learning models or dashboard to find insights so this was one of the ways that i use python as a data engineer now there are multiple use cases of python in data engineering so each company uses python in their own way now the question is how to learn all of these things so there are basically two ways i will give you so one way is basically if you have been following me then you will know i have a python for data engineering course dedicated for data engineering only this course will take you from very basic level to the advanced level and make you python ready data engineer so at one place you will learn everything about python and how to use python for data engineering but if you want to go on the path of self-learning and explore thing by yourself then you can also learn these things for free so here is the three-step approach that i suggest first learn the basic fundamentals these fundamental concepts are common across all of the different programming languages such as variables operators loops conditional statement once you learn all of these basic concepts then you can learn more about about some advanced level and start doing the hands-on practice this includes learning object oriented programming exception handling working with different packages functions lambda functions and you can practice your skills on websites such as lead code or hacker rank and the third step is picking a niche now you can use python for many different applications such as you can use python for game development you can use python for web development data science and many more all of these different niche requires learning about their own packages and frameworks so let's say if you want to learn python for web development you might have to learn about flask or django but in the case, if you want to learn Python for data engineering, here's what you need to focus on. First, understand how to work with the different types of file formats such as CSV, JSON, Avro, Parquet, etc. Second, learn how to connect and query database using code such as learning about SQL, Alchemy, PyMySQL, PsychOpG2. Third, you can learn about different types of date time format and time zone. Four is learning about how to write data transformation job. You can use pandas and learn more about pandas and how to manipulate data how to drop some columns, how to combine multiple data frames and apply some logic on top of it. Fifth is you can learn about how to automate the entire thing. And sixth, learn how to read documentation and connect with the different tools. So there you have it, how I use Python as a data engineer and how to learn Python for data engineering from the scratch. I have a course, if you want, you can enroll into it. If you don't want to enroll, then you can go to the self-learning path that I've give you. Pick any way, you will arrive at the same destination. That is all for this video. If you learned something and if you found this video insightful, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.